now I want to talk a little more specifically about uh, you know the India business and and the listed entity. Uh, not to talk numbers, but just to give you a sense of expectations. I was looking at a, a, a note from one of the brokerage firms, and it said that uh, you know Siemens is, is is expected to Siemens Limited, that is the, the listed company, is expected yeah. to double the EPS from about thir thirty five rupees to seventy rupees, double profits from where they are uh, by. 2025. I just want to ask you if uh, you see such pace of growth that can deliver on these very high expectations. And if yes, where will this growth come from? What's the focus area and which of your businesses will drive it? I can see, I can see it. There's the potential in there. Um, we just had a record high in our stock price um, just, just be, when I arrived. Yes. Maybe I have to come more often to go for <laughs> the next one. No, but um, good news is um, this growth will be driven from all our businesses. Let me start with the industrial business where we are any equipping any kind of manufacturing. Um, and we equip manufacturing sites like Calva, 50 year old um, brownfield, and we transform it into a digital plant as well as new greenfield plants. What I do see in that space is more and more complex products coming into, into India. Um, Turk, for example, Apple decided recently to come with uh, their, their phones uh, yes. to be produced and so on and so on. You see battery manufacturing, semiconductors. This is really complex stuff. So you need technology here, which is tailwind for us. Mm. I see it also in our smart infrastructure space, which is they electrifying data centers, the energy systems, whatever. Um, that, that's tailwind, but also the buildings. 30% of the energy consumption comes from buildings. We automate buildings. Mobility, we recently won a three billion order for locomotives. Yes. The mobility makes the contribution, and that's just the start. We want to double down on that success. Healthcare too. I mean, the healthcare system is, is also expanding. So yeah. we are firing on all cylinders, mm -hmm. and I do believe we, we, can achieve, uh, okay. we can achieve. Let me take up the mobility bit, because that was a big headline, right? This uh, mega order from the Indian Railways, 26,000 crore rupees, a over three billion, as you said. Um, so, what's the strategy uh, on the railways from here on? What potential do you see? And a lot of people uh, are wondering whether Siemens will now go a little slow, be a little less aggressive because you've already got this big order in December, or will you continue to be aggressive and fire away and, and really uh, look at the at dominating the railway opportunity? So, we will definitely not slow down in, in, in contrast. We won't double down on our success and really do more. India is a railway country. I mean, the government decided to electrify more and more lines. They electrified 30,000 kilometers in the last five years, which is the equivalent of Germany, by the way. And this in five years, think about it. So my message here is the government is really serious about putting more, um, more freight and transport on, 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 the, on, the, on rail. We are already here in with uh, rail infrastructure, so signaling system, electrification. Um, we had a hard time to enter that market with rolling stock. So locomotive is the first one. Now, of course, we want to go for more um, EMUs, so um, passenger trains and the like. But the Vande Bharat, I'm not, I'm not sure if you're familiar because that was the other big sort of, uh, you know, bold statement and huge tendering happening for those trains as well. In, I mean, in case you've uh, had a look. And that's where, uh, at least I think the last round, Siemens wasn't as active. In no, we, terms were, of we, were, we were active. Mm. Uh, we were active. I mean, we, we are, we are, the point is, um, you, you have to step up now in order to, to localize first. I mean, we have a plant here, which we, which we actually we were putting on a, on a hypernate mode because we didn't have the orders. Now we, we really got it up and running and, we, and it's, it's firing. But then you need to have a, a local manufacturing, local presence, and then you can double down on that on that success. You need to have local engineering and so on. So therefore, we are very active. We are going behind, is it either metro projects or commuter projects? And I'm pretty sure there we will have a next win and, and really make, make our contribution to that market. Okay. Uh, what about uh, exports? Again, just going by yeah. earlier numbers, uh, if I look at the, the year that closed in September, the share of exports from India diminished a little bit compared to what it was, let's say, a couple of years back. So was that sort of an aberration or is that a conscious thought of focusing more on the local market? Or do you see the opportunity of making more here in India and perhaps uh, exporting to other markets? No, definitely. I mean, I don't know if there's a, a little dip, it could just be a mix effect of products mm -hmm. be, um, but definitely we want to use our strengths in India with more than 30 manufacturing sites here, highly competitive. We want to use it also for global for exports. We are exporting a lot of electric equipment to Middle East, for example, to other places. 
once we are once we are established with rolling stock stronger in Indian markets, I can definitely imagine that India will be one of the global hubs for metro cars, for example. So I mean, it's a, it's a it's a competitive environment. If you win there, then you can win in other places too. So therefore, absolutely. Okay. Uh, quite interesting. So, what about investments? Since you are doubling down on, I, I think mobility is something uh, you know that's that's really top of mind for you. Uh, what about more investments in India? So, it, even before this Indian market is now picking up for the last three years, um, for the last seven years, we invested more than a billion euros. So, this is give you an ima um, imagination where we are coming from. Um, if you um, extrapolate the growth rate going forward, um, then I would say there's uh, there's something more to come. Something more to come. Without disclosing any details. <laughs> okay. Uh, what about uh, more expansion, as you mentioned? I think already at uh, 31 factories here. Uh, are you thinking of adding any more capacity or, uh, you know, how I mean, are the current plants running? The, the answer is clearly yes, because um, with that growth rate, which we see, um, you will see that by in no time you will run into your capacity load and therefore you have to add capacities. Is it either incremental on existing sites or think about new ones? But this is, since we are a profit-driven company, we have to look at our cash flow, we are listed, so we have to take uh, care about our shareholders' money too. Mm -hmm. So that means we, we, prefer, we prefer, obviously, to run our factories at full steam yeah. uh, before we then go for new ones. But again, with that growth rate, I have not so much concerns that you will see more investments in India going on. Fair point. Uh, what's your take on... Uh, overall, the CapEx cycle in the country. The government, of course, we know the numbers. They've had a huge increase, I think 35% increase in the outlay for this year. Uh, what's your sense on the private cycle as well? Did you really see that picking up? Yeah, this is reinforcing itself. Um, we see, when you see economies developing, they, it comes in waves, not necessarily consequentially. They, they come concurrently. First wave is energy. Second wave is infrastructure. And this combination pulls then industry and then higher quality of life, healthcare and the like. And you can see that in all economies, wherever you go. And, uh, and if you see then the handwriting of the government, um, putting a lot of emphasis on the energy sector, also making it more green, putting money in there, putting a lot of emphasis on infrastructure. infrastructure. This is the next thing. And that pulls industry. With this combination, you can attract high high technology, high value manufacturing. So therefore, and this will be private investments too. So I believe this is what I'm talking about. Once the wheel is turning and you see that coming and then you create jobs and these jobs are more high value jobs, which makes more private spending. Um, so the, the share of private spending in GDP will go up. And the virtual and then, cycle, and then, and then, as we say. Guess what happens? Yes, okay. Uh, just a word also on the real alignment of global supply chains. You alluded to that you know, at the beginning of the conversation. Uh, how do you see India place? We've been talking about the whole China plus one strategy for a while. Uh, do you see enough evidence of that happening on the ground in the conversations that you hear around the world? Yes, I mean, very clearly. I mean, the first indication we talked about Apple, for example, there are others. I mean, some semiconductor packaging first, maybe foundries. You talk about battery manufacturing. Uh, um, and I, I see India on the receiving end. Um, if companies want to diversify their supply chain, um, maybe also their go-to market, so what they sell or what they buy. I see India as a, as a, as a country which has still uh, a, lo a lot of labor in the market which you, can, which you can use, a market which is developing, government is supporting with energy and infrastructure spendings on the receiving end. Okay, uh, fair enough. So, uh, Roland, as we're coming down to, you know, final words and thoughts, uh, I believe India is among your top five fastest growing markets for, for Siemens worldwide. Our current planning, if you look into our current planning, Siemens markets, next five years, um, India is on place number one. Roland, that sounds fantastic because that also means that we'll probably see a little more of you coming here to India, to Mumbai, and maybe more such interactions in the near future. Absolutely. I'll have to be here. Yes. Looking forward to it. And thank you so much for taking out the time today. My pleasure.